Okay, we have the minutes from the March 4th meeting. If anybody's got any objections, I'll make a motion. I mean, not March, May. Huh? May. Yes. Motion. Motion. Second. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. John? Yes. <clears throat> okay. We can go to uh, drop down here and do uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, and he's received the RFPs for the Park Pavilion project. So you want to give us a little update on what you found out, Jim? Uh, we received only one response. Uh -huh. We were supposed to have received three, but two of them decided at the last second to pass. Wasn't big enough, not enough money. Um, I still heard did indeed submit a bid uh -huh. um, for a proposal. And they are experienced in this area, northeastern Ohio, with several, according to their list, several pavilions all by themselves that they've done. Um, they're from down near uh, Carrollton, near Columbus. They have a big, huge lumber facility down there. They build log homes. But they do this type of structure also, which is still, you know, finish uh, wood timber. Um, I, I don't see any problem with them at all. They're financially stable. Um, the packet was impressive to, to, to read. To I was food. impressed. You know, they even submitted a drawing of Auburn's project, not another drawing. They, they went to the trouble to draw up our pavilion. And yeah, submit it in their package. My drawing. So, it's right in here. Yeah, you can put it on the floor. I got it right here. I got it over there. Okay, yeah. So, uh, that being said, you know, with the fact that we have a budget, I, I, I think we should proceed. That's your recommendation? My recommendation is that. Okay. Yeah, I will meet with them. Uh, I'll meet with them again if, uh, if this is approved. And. Uh, Get the design stage started. You know, it would take probably a month to get drawings. They have our in-house engineer, so we don't have to worry about a third party drawing it up. It's their own engineer. He's licensed to do this. And um, I'll be with them and get them started on design, and then we'll take it from there and go through you know each phase of the drawings till we get what we want. And then it'll probably take. Um, Couple of months anyway, maybe ten weeks to fabricate all the timbers. Um, the installer says he can put the building up in two weeks. I don't think he can, but we got time. So you know, and, and with the uh, pandemic going on, um, the timing for uh, for this project is couldn't be any better because while we're in the design stage and while we're in the fabrication stage, hopefully the pandemic will fade away, as it were, you know, fingers crossed. So by, by August and September, we should be, you know, on the job, put this up. Yeah. I hope that we are putting in foundations and the uh, concrete floor in this thing prior to the structure coming up so we can, you know, jump one, one phase on top of the other so we're not waiting until the timber shows up and then start cold, we're going to be underway that's prior why, to that. That's why we want you in on the job, because you're yeah, going to good weather stage we'll everything the right way. And yep. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the proposal from Fox Seller. No second. Stutter or Stutter? 
H-O-C-H-S-T-E-T, L-E-R. Milling. In case you're wondering, they are Amish. What the Mike. Matters, but to me, it lends some credibility. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Uh, John? Yes. You want us to? I have a couple comments that I saw when I looked at their drawing. You want to get those now so we can say a little one drawing, some middle at least? Um. They're not going to do anything until they get something in writing from us. Yeah. So that would be the next thing I'm going to do is, is write up their contract okay. and bring it to the next meeting Okay. so we can get signatures on it and get it down to him. I'll, I'll talk to him later this week. Um, they're not working full time down there, but they are working um, and see what his schedule is, whether he comes up here or I go down there. Uh, we can get together with the with uh, you guys in, on the drawing stage at that time, or you want to do it now, whatever you want to do. Well, there's also, I, I, want, I want to discuss the idea of the Burton Piers. Okay. And also discuss a little bit about how much electric we're going to actually put in this place. Well, the lights, I can't, can't see any reason for anything. You had one ten service there. Two twenty? What would you do? No, with we're no, you're not getting two twenty. Yeah. We're, we can bring a sixty amp sub panel over from the other building and mount it on a pole on one of the columns. Yeah. You know that's lockable, and then from there we can run LED security motion sensitive night lights up in the rafters so that if anybody goes in there, it lights up. It's a deterrent number one. Number two is a safety feature. Um, and I think we probably ought to also have at least two, maybe three 110 receptacles in there for people oh, sure. that want to plug in. A radio, a projector. Yeah, or, or a crock pot or something, you know, yeah, if there's I mean, a I, I get, there or something. I, I, mean, how many, I have one on each pole, if we could. Well, that's a lot. There's a lot of poles. Yeah, yeah. there's 10 poles. What are we, 60 by? 40 by 60. It's still I, well, I just know how these things work. I go to these things and all of a sudden you've got you got ten tables, you got ten different <laughs> families there. They're cooking and it's like another running extension cords and you know, I mean running okay, so you're running five outlets or ten outlets, yeah, there's some wiring involved, but in the overall scheme of things, I'd rather well, spend a little bit too. of money now than this it would be the load that would be on it. You know, I mean, you, you put a dozen, um, two, four, six, you actually got 12 columns. And each circuit is, is capable of handling 12 to 1500 watts, which is a one to device. 15, 15 amp. Yeah, one device, you know, which is like a crock pot or people are going to bring microwaves and that's going to eat up one circuit all by itself. So. You don't, 60 amp will not take care of a dozen circuits. We had some rough idea where we were going to spend on electric when we broke this down. Because we had some grant money left over from... That was about 2500 bucks. What was that from? I, I personally that. think if you, okay. if you had just a few plugs, if like across the west end, that would help handle it. But... That would end up being because you're going to each plug you're going to want to have two circuits to one plug, right? But I mean you're going to probably run a typical 15 amp, 15 and 20 amp breaker to each. Yeah, it would be 20 each panel. 20. Yeah, it would be 20, and you would probably get 60 amp service. With the lighting is going to be nothing, but that's a circuit by itself because you don't want them to interrupt that service with. You know, a spark yeah. or a short yeah. or something with a piece of equipment they plug in. My concern is safety and, and also illegal usage. How much, put it amp, I mean, how much more is it to put in a 200 amp service? Oh, we don't have that there. That's what we have in the We'd have to building. go way out. We'd have to go out the drive to the transformer and get that and bring it in. And 
You're talking about ten, fifteen thousand dollars to do that. So well, let's let's talk have... about anticipated usage there. I mean, you know, a crock pot. What? Well, the lights, a couple of the them. The lights are going to be some fifteen. It's just a single circuit, and they're going to just be some LED bulbs. Yeah, so that's going to be nominal. So, but that's going to be a circuit. Uh, it has to be a dedicated circuit. I can see like a, uh, the scouts doing a movie night up there, or yeah. a projector, and for a homeowners association thing. Yeah, those projectors don't use that much oh, electricity. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's all I'm talking about. Is, you know, what, what would you anticipate being used in there? Well, if we're limited to sixty amps, I mean, the most we can put in is if you have one for one circuit for a light, you you put one plug on each side. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of three on each side. So you have two, six. You have six columns down each side. Every other one, that's six of them. Sixty amp service could handle that. It's kind of staggering here. here. Yeah, I mean they're yeah. uh, one, two, three, four, five. They're fifteen feet apart. I can walk that far, especially for food. Like I said, you know, typically, they're typically not used, you know, most of the time you're going to have people up there for, during ball games and stuff. It's only when you have a dedicated picnic or something or a family grouping uh, that are, you know, specifically up there that, that you'd be using those. So, most well, of the time they'll be okay. They may find themselves in a... Don't forget, well, it's only open at night. I mean, at daytime. At day, night. yeah. I'd want the the receptacles to be locked out at the box when not in use, just for fire and safety. That's all. Just have them. We know somebody specifically using it for a specific purpose, then we can open them up. Yeah, that's all. You just that day you just have somebody yeah. run up and turn them on, and then the next day you turn them off inside the box. You lock that up. We can start with that and exercise it later, you know, when we get further into the design. But we need an engineer, electrical engineer, to look at what's there to see how, what kind of cost we're talking about what we, um, against what we want to do. Because we do have a budget. We did have an initial quote from... Uh, we did Seamall, maybe? No. The guy from the service garage, yeah. Huffman. Huff. Yeah, Hartman. Hartman. Yeah. And uh, I think Scott could do a good job of helping figure out what we need and what we don't need. The other thing I was thinking, it, it, right now we showed stone veneer on the pillars, on the four corner pillars to the top. So thinking well, maybe instead of going all the way to the top, we just go up. 42 inches, and then you could do maybe all the pillars, It'd be a little bit more than where we are now. Sort of add more like. Yeah, and what it would do would be the start if you ever did fill in between. Yeah, if you look at the square footage of masonry, of what John's talking about, you take half, if you're going up eight foot, now you're going 42 inches, so you just divide it in half and say half is on this column and I'll take the top half and put it on the next yeah. one. You're going to cover, you're going to cover two, four, six, eight of the twelve columns. You're going yeah. to cover with the same square footage by doing that. So you're only adding four more columns. Now with those have, like I'm with, picturing Adam Hall, they got that concrete cap on top of them. Yeah, I think it's all precast. Like yeah. It's yeah. make good uh, cup holders, I know. So. Yeah. It yeah. frees up the post to, you know, to tie stringers or whatever you want to do for decorations because it, it's wood the rest of the way yeah. up. You know, it's timber. Yeah, no problem with that. I think it's a nice design. Well, it's more practical than, you know, standing Oh, they're usable. Those, that's yeah. that's what everybody does at the bear on the corner, right? That's, that's important. It is important. Nobody really got it that way. Who's the man? So we got Mr. South Russell here. Um, Newberry went all the way up in the four corners. Yeah. But there is all enclosed. They're, they got a ceiling on inside and everything. I mean, they spent they spent money on this one, and it's small. It's 30 by 30, 900 square feet against our 2400.
Yeah, that's all I have. Okay. So we'll go back to Mike. Do you have anything? Uh, no, just I got a, a quick email from a resident. Uh, it was up there on Sunday and the garbage was full. I, I emailed me back and said, well, we pick up garbage on Monday. And also commented that we have fired their three quarter pots up at the thing. I said, well, KCE supplies them, so. KC was supplying all the port. Now they're not using it, or they just left them there because they don't know quite know what's going on right now. Well, I think they've just been cooperating with us. Just kind of leaving them in there from last year. And and they, well, that's they were questioning the fact why we have three. Well, that's why we have three to cover them. Well, there's men, women, and then idiots like him that ask question. So. Okay, but keep it essential, so. I was thinking you were going to have that your neighbor calling about the rain. What? I thought maybe you weren't here for the rain. You were at work. We had probably three inches of rain in 45 minutes. We have floods everywhere. Oh, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Friday. Friday afternoon, and then we knew it was a downpour. Yeah, I was there to watch my my ditches turn into a river flowing down the street, you know, like everybody else. Was. Yeah. By and large, those worked down at Stafford and Valley. I was at Andy's house when that hit. Had that same stupid whirlpool, and uh, it it actually worked okay down there. Now the guys are ditching east to west and coming up Stafford. I think you're aware of what's happened there where the two new houses are being built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The edge of that road is crumbling in there. Yeah. I know a neighbor across the street right where the uh, culvert goes across under underneath and heads out to Taylor May. His yard was <laughs> pretty deep in water. I mean it all drained down. I mean yeah. we all had it but how was that water going across Taylor May? It was rumbling. Rumbling. Yeah, white caps. But uh, yeah, I mean, they've got. I mean, every basically every place on our, you know, uh, my street. You know, we're the city slickers have bought the swamp land. You know, so whenever we get a big rain, everything fills up. But you know, it's all solid clay, so nothing drains through. But I mean, you know, all the. Nothing overflowed. Nothing overflowed the street. They didn't have any, you know, anybody complaining about their basements being flooded. So at least the work on yans and stuff worked. Right. Well, my one neighbor that was complaining about getting the, the Evans basement flood, I uh, found out he had a, basically a crushed pipe, pipe. at the house. <laughs> so what was happening is Every time a second sump would kick on, it you know start pumping up. There's no place for it to go, so I'm just coming back into the house. So once you got that fixed, they haven't heard any complaints since then. PJ, yeah, just a couple things. One is getting some phone calls about cemeteries again. And I talked to Mike. You know, we're doing the flags and the veterans' graves. And we're going to do a, and not open the public, but we're going to do the wreath. Ceremony, both things, and we're going to have visitors at the cemeteries on Memorial Day. So the guys are working on trying to find a dry slot, and get some sprucing up done up there at the cemeteries. Um, Did you talk to JFD? Call. Mike was going to talk to JFD because I'm hearing there's more stones being. They're running a little tight to some of these stones. We got some tweaks. And um, Mike and I both said, about every two years you get a new crew, and that's what, what they got. And they just need to slow down and move over a bit. Um, the other thing is, uh, Jim, you started working with, and of course I have been for a couple of years now with Alicia Baby, where she's watershed partners. 
Yes. Uh, she's leaving there, as kind of you would understand. She's a pretty talented girl. And she got a. She is. Uh, a she got quite an opportunity, and she's uh, she's going to move along towards Minnesota. Good. So we're going to be working with Kristen Hebebrand, which I have met her. She's been there maybe a year, something like that. So I'll talk to her. This came in last Friday, I think it was. I'll talk to her later on this week or when I got a slot from the doctors this week. So, And then we'll have to hook up with her. And okay. But they've all dealt with this before, and it'll be smooth. So that's it. And we have, my friend. Just our regular reports, uh, revenue report, corporation summary report, fund summary report, and uh, your uh, warrants in front of you, uh, 5,810 through 5824, totaling $115,869.95. Of note is Morton Salt in the amount of $107,000. Hundred and seven thousand forty-five dollars and sixteen cents. That's all that I have. Um, road department wise, we've been pretty busy. Uh, uh, finished the ditching, put on the ditching over on uh, Snow Road, and. Uh, and we've been trying to get a hold of Troy. <laughs> Not too easy to find, but uh, there are partners, you know, in that paving project that we're supposed to do there this year. We should be ready with all of our projects. And uh, I think that if we read the tea leaves right, they're not going to do Washington Street again this year. In which case, there's some spots in there that got to be some attention's got to be put to them. And uh, okay, put out the whole project, but you still got to maintain it while it's there. But uh, the other issue is is drainage, and that's the big part of this project. But water was running down Washington across the entire road during that little monsoon that fell down and you know you get different reports from people but I'm gonna bet you it was at least four inches a week and uh, well what are we at about our our, our six hundredth year of rain in the last twelve months well <laughs> you, you know you say that but that's true it seems to be we've had a lot of big big rains lately um, the infrastructure is basically designed for 25 years. And uh, in almost all these cases, we've reviewed, before we've ever repaved or anything, we've reviewed these culverts with the county. And uh, so, you know, I don't, you know, it's not something that's really in our wheelhouse, but. Uh, we are, you know, taking, we're working, we're, we're not ignoring them, that's for sure. And uh, so, uh, but uh, the guys have been kind of, they've been pretty busy uh, taking care of things. Uh, I do call your attention to the blood drives we have coming up. The last one was extremely successful and highly needed, and so is this upcoming one. We have two upcoming ones, and so if you have someone that needs some, likes to, you know, I, I know people that, my son-in-law, he's a three-gallon man, <laughs> and then, uh, so... For those that want to call the Board of Health and complain because we're having a large item, large group of people. Yes. You know, uh, uh, 
Okay, uh, large item trash drop off. Yeah, we were initially scheduled for June 6th and uh, just doing some research. I see Solon's going to do one. Bainbridge, I guess, is trying to come up with the right combination of how to operate the, the day. I, I just, at this point, John, Mike, I, I'm, I think it's time to start turning the ship back towards normal. We can't get it to it in June because I know there's a lot of questions going to be rolling in. I've already taken a couple of calls as to if we're going to have it or not. I, I and I have talked to Emmerich at the and about and he's talked to the guys up there. Um, you know, there's still concerns. I mean, we just opened up the state essentially last week, this week. I, I'm kind of thinking June 20th. We'd be open a month. Uh, and it feels like the that's uh, you know, any problem getting dumpsters because we're you know, they're gonna get over a month out. Okay. The only reason I don't like doing it that soon is right now everything's opening up, and it's gonna be right about the one month mark if we do it then. I'd really like to wait, you know, get a month into the, in the opening and see it's what's happening before we commit to, so I don't want to commit to it and then not do it. Second thing, after talking to Emmerich and the guys, and they said, they're not thrilled, they would do it, maybe, from a limited vantage point, i.e., they won't, they will just operate the loaders, okay, so there's no touch. Now, this gets us to the point where people have to unload their own vehicles. Yeah, that's that's going to be a problem. Yeah, well, yeah, what, what you is. mean, when the, the, the two 85-year-old grandmothers come in there with seven freezers on the back of their trailer, and you're going to sit there and watch <laughs> them while they drag them off? Not to mention, you know, we can unload a pickup truck and... Oh yeah, that's, minutes, that's another another factor. Minutes, is going to be a, a guy unloading his own pickup yeah. truck is going to be twenty minutes. Yeah, so you know, I I wouldn't even consider doing this until we can actually get to the point where we can operate it the way we operated before. And also, one of the biggest things we do is the senior pickup, and if that's not part of it, then I mean. That was, always big, always, that was always the biggest part of the public yeah, service. but that's always it. organized through the county. That's out of our control. Right. That's out of our control. Uh, well, like I, said, I, I get your point, and, and there is, there's a hole there. Somebody's going to have to work it. Somebody's going to have to glove up and mask up and unload. It's just bottom line, you know, because uh, I, don't, I, I don't, the number of cars we get, self-unloading is not going to work. And secondly, there's a factor of now having non-township personnel doing that kind of work around uh, equipment, the power equipment and loaders that are being operated. There's a liability That's issue. That's what I hear Bain were just talking about, too. Yeah, yeah so. So, what, so you, you fix know, all those up behind you. Realistically, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to have a guy stand there and watch the guy unload his truck? Yeah, ain't going to. Yeah. That's, that's not the way it works. Uh, but understand my thinking, it's time to start going back towards normal. Well, it is, but I'm looking at the going back to normal part is more to save the economy <laughs> and keep all these people from starving and losing their homes. Okay? That's kind of the biggest factor behind it. It's somebody that's got to live with their broken dishwasher in their basement for another six months or a year, that's not a deal breaker. I think you have to respect the employees. Well, I, I, I talked to Emmerich and I told him that, you know, no, nobody would be mandated to do this. If they did it, whatever they decide to do will be perfect. Uh, 100 percent vow that they would not be pushed. We wouldn't push them. We're not going to make anybody do it. If anybody felt uncomfortable about doing it, 
I said they don't have to do it. I want to make that clear to them today that they're controlling this. I'm not putting any of the, the workers in danger. Cause all I got to do is have one guy get sick, okay? And, have no and even if he's not that sick. Now, everybody's in quarantine for 14 days. We lose the road department for half a month, maybe three weeks. That's true. That's not acceptable. I think I'm in favor of pushing it off to into the fall, and uh, that's my thought. Well, we got to wait till this, I think the middle of summer just to see see what's going on. You know, it's you know it's yeah it's it's a it's a great event, but you know if they can if they can move up the Olympics for a year, we can, we can probably work around this. Yeah, but this is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we're trying to provide for the residents there. I'm just looking out here. You got the 20th, you got the 27th, which is pretty much right on top of the 20th. And then you got the 4th of July, which will segue into the next thing I'll talk about. So you'd be mid mid July at earliest, is what we're thinking, possibly. I'm thinking September. Like I said, I'm not looking at any time frame until I see what happens over the next month. You know, we've we've published many, many places that we haven't canceled this, we've just postponed it. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. And we've gotten lots of calls to the office. Oh, when's gonna when are you gonna do the trash day? So obviously it's a very popular event, but well, let's, let's it's not it worth risk losing the road guys over it. Well, again, yeah, let's take a look at uh, you know at our next meeting. That's two more weeks. That should be enough for all these idiots who are partying down in the flats to see how much they've stretched things out. And, uh, I don't know, down in Columbus, did you see these? Yeah. I know, nothing, nothing. Just like there's nothing happening. We're just in the yellow. You know, we're just out of red, we're just in the yellow, and if we go too fast, we're going to go back to red. We want to, I, me, personally, I'm not doing anything until it gets close to the green. You know, I, I don't want to, I mean, I'm going to die, but it's not going to be from this stuff. I can tell you that. I'm staying away. It's not worth it. Not to me. Now I've become pretty attached to myself. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll look at it June fifteenth. How's that sound? So we're at. No, I think we just just keep this evaluated. Yeah, we, I mean, we just have to. Because yeah. even if we make the decision June fifteenth, the event wouldn't happen until, as we were talking, mid July, because you wouldn't tie it up into the four. The one good thing about this event is all you have to do is put those cans out there, and They'll then know. they're all yeah, they're they coming like know. flies. They so. Well, once yeah, again, I mean, it, it is what we do. We do it's have to give do. Uh, the dumpster guy, you know, Eric tries to give him a month's notice. Yeah. Well, we'll look at it June 15th then and see where we're at. And that would, you know, I, don't know, I can't see July from there. It's the next page. But. Uh, the other thing we have on here is 2020 crack seal, various roads. Emmerich wanted to look, just look at the. Uh, the item by item comparison for roads. There's some sixes in this list that may just have one crack. We want he wants to double check to see well how much are they charging for that? The whole price came in a little higher than we expected it to. And uh, so I guess <coughs> we still believe very thoroughly in uh, crack sealing, but he just wants to double check this. This is a new vendor. They're the same vendor that's going to be uh, striping the roads for us for the county contract, so. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Can I ask a question? Was there a motion on the floor to approve cost that you guys did vote on? Oh yeah, well if you would vote, we can make a passive resolution to 
I think we did. We voted. We did. We got the spelling right there. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I missed that. I must have been talking. Yeah, pay attention, will you, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. Arrow Mark is doing the back seal. I'm sorry. Right. Do we need to do a motion for that? Well, I thought we'll wait and see before we hire this guy. We may not. Have you know, he's got a unit price on all the roads. Emmerich's going to look at them. We'll do it at the okay. meeting. Yeah. Something else. Well, we don't want to crack seal before July anyway. But... Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second.